சாமானிய நேர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் என்னா எப்பவுமே சீனியர் ஜெர்னலிஸ்ட் டெல்லி ராஜகோபால் இருப்பாரு சிஏ இருப்பார் ஸ்ரீராம் சிஷாத்ரி இருப்பாரு அப்படின்னோட இன்னைக்கு ஒரு யங் கேர்ள் வந்து நாகராஜோட இதுல உட்கார்ந்துருக்காங்க என்ன விஷயம் அரசியல் பேச போறாங்களா இல்ல என்ன பேச போறாங்க அப்படின்ற டவுட் இந்த ஸ்கிரீன் பார்த்தோன்னே உங்களுக்கு வரும் ஆஹ் அரசியல் பேச போறாங்க ஆனா உலக அரசியல் பேச போறாங்க இஸ்ரேல் பாலஸ்தீன் பிரச்சனை பத்தி பேச பிரச்சனை பேச போறாங்க ஏன் இவங்களை சூஸ் பண்ணோம் அப்படின்னா வந்து தமிழ் ஆர்ஜின் தென்காசி திருநெல்வேலியிலேருந்து இருந்த ஒரு ஃபேமிலி வந்து டெல்லியில செட்டில் ஆகி ஃப்ரம் டெல்லி தே மூவ் டு லண்டன் ஹர் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் இன் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் பாலிடிக்ஸ் இஸ் ஹியூஜ் ஹுமங்கஸ் இந்த வயசுல வந்து இவ்வளோ நாலேஜ் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் பாலிடிக்ஸ்ல வரது வந்து ரொம்ப சந்தோஷம் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் ஹேட் அட் வேர்ட் வித் அட் பார்த்தோன்னே இட் வாஸ் வெரி இம்ப்ரெசிவ் ஷி ஹாஸ் ஈவன் ஆல்சோ கிவன் இன்டர்வியூ டு அனதர் சேனல் ஆல்சோ So, uh, I don't want to take too much time in the direction. So, let's have Apuru Ayer on the show. Apuru Ayer, welcome. Namaskara. Namaskara, yes. Um, so, first, we'll, we'll go into to, uh, Palestine and the uh, Sunday Kachitakula. Before you, why international politics? Why do you have any interest in that? Um, so, um, when you are in 10th grade after 10th grade in 11th and 12th you have to choose a stream particular be it commerce humanities or mathematics uh, and science so I, i already knew in the beginning that i am not interested in becoming an engineer or a doctor which you typically have in uh, south india so um, that was something a very different concept for my family as well because they were like okay you do not want to become an engineer or a doctor it's absolutely fine you should choose something that you are passionate about even during that time i was a little in a little dilemma because uh, i did not know what to choose what to go ahead in terms of career so i chose commerce etc uh, commerce and mathematics but by the end of 12th grade board exams i understood that i am not interested in that and i would rather choose uh, political science humanities courses to see where i uh, where that courses take me in terms of career perspective and uh, i had already been do, uh, doing a lot of model united nations back in my school time so that also uh, helped me understand the uh, political science policy international relations as a career as a subject as a uh, completely so that also played a huge uh, factor in terms of me choosing uh, um, international relations my teachers were really supportive my professors in uh, my undergraduate and uh, same with in terms of masters course as well they were really supportive and because of all their uh, support and guidance here i am okay all the best um, so palestine israel problem go up along so i just want to have a, see ena enak vandu onnume theriyadhu i am just sitting in india or uh, or group support palestine podudhu unnu group support israel podudhu uh, so many political leaders are talking idhu engalukku adhu ungalukku enna pesiterukanga adha yaar so where does the actual problem starts endha edathu dhaan prachana varudhu so with regards to israel palestine history jews palestine amongst others this uh history dates back to centuries not years or decades but for centuries and it's a very complicated history to understand for any person who has just started following the news with regards to the recent uh, israel hamas conflict so i would not dive deep dive directly into centuries ago of uh, history i'd like to just a talk about the crux of the issue dating back from uh, 1948 when uh, the state of israel was created that eventually led to the first israeli arab war where arab states including um, egypt jordan syria amongst others supported uh, the palestine and at the same time protested in terms of its establishment then you had uh, the ending of the arab israeli conflict the creation and the demarcation of the israeli borders the creation of west bank and the gaza strip under the jordanian and the egyptian rule respectively 1950s and 60s if we go ahead they had the palestinian refugee crisis which resulted in the, due to the 1948 war leading to a displacement of hundreds and thousands of um, palestinians and the palestinian national movement eventually gained momentum with the formation of the palestinian liberation organization in the 1964 um 
then we had the six day war in 1967 that resulted in israeli's occupation of west bank and gaza strip east jerusalem and golan heights um 1970s to 80s various other conflicts and uprising further took place including the first intifada uh, then egypt and israel finally signed the camp david accords in 1978 um i may be uh, a little deferred in terms of the dates but j i'm just trying to give a just timeline of the entire israel palestine uh, palestine history since 1948 then you have the palestine liberation organization gaining international recognition with the uh, uh, yeah, with and Yasser Arafat um, addressing the United Nations, then Israel establishing settlements amongst us. Finally, the, um, it, the conversation with regards to Israel and Palestine, uh, two state solution amongst other, gained uh, momentum with uh, Oslo Accords in 1993 and uh, for peace process between Israel and Palestine. In that process, the Palestinian Authority was established in uh, 19 uh, after the Oslo Accords to govern parts of West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Uh, and finally, uh, during that time as well, Israeli Prime Minister um, Rabin was uh, Yitzhak Rabin was assassinated in. Uh, 1995 uh during that time by um certain is extremist forces who oppose the oslo accords 1990s this ends like that with the, then begins the second intifada with two th from uh the late 1990s to uh 2005 2006 then since then the entire 21st century there have been various attempts at the peace negotiations with regards to the palestine and israel two-state solution israel withdrawing from uh, gaza in 2005 conflicts and wars with uh Israel and Gaza with regards to Operation Cast Lead, Operation, Operation Protective Edge, then that led to a huge casualty and damages for both sides. And efforts to achieve a two-state solution still continues to uh, continues to this date, but there have been major obstacles with regards to uh, that two-state solution because there are various terms and conditions that both the negotiating parties have not been able to agree upon. And the recent development with regards to the Abraham Accords was, uh, was in 2020 is the Abraham Accords that has somehow changed the politics and the political dynamics of the Middle East. Now, uh, now that the situation that we now the conversation of israel and palestine is again in the forefront with regards to the recent israel hamas war that began on october 7th uh october 7th this of this year where at about 6 30 hamas launched a barrage of rockets towards israel now that over uh, i just want to ask you a question before getting into that before getting into that i just want to ask a question uh, the first question is who are these Hamas? See, either the war should be named between Israel, the war is named between Israel and Palestine. But one word which we get always is Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. Who are these Hamas? How Palestine and Hamas are related? Now, um, Hamas, it's is elf is an uh, a huge Islamist militant movement and one of the Palestinian territories, two major political parties. It governs more than two million people, Palestinians in Gaza Strip. And at the same time, it's best known for its resistance to Israel. Now, when we talk so about- So one question, Israel, so I'll, I'll, I'll just get come back to that point. So you say that uh, Hamas is like ISIS. For example, I'm saying, I'm not comparing both. Like ISI is a separate organization, Hamas is also a separate organization inside Palestine, right? Now, um, when this the recent uh, comparison between ISIS and Hamas has taken place with regards to the intensity of the con attacks that have been launched by Hamas on Israel. Now, one needs to understand that Hamas is a designated terrorist organization in uh, several countries, including the United States, um, uh, United States, and 
the issue with regards to the comparison between hamas hamas uh, hamas and isis is that hamas in uh, was elected by the palestinians in gaza strip in 2006 democ elections now for that i'll just try to go a little um, into the history the palestinian authority was established under the oslo accords it is a semi autonomous entity that was established in 1990 um, uh, around 1994 due to a peace agreement between israel and the palestinian liberation organization and it was given a limited li amount of self governance in certain areas of uh, west bank and the gaza strip with the aims of an independent two state solution but the problem is the two state solution conversation has been taking place for a very long time and there have been no developments in terms of that kind of an agreement there have been no negotiations taking place between the negotiating parties israel the palestinian leaders amongst so with time uh, the palestinian authority started losing its respect support amongst the palestinians this was evident in the Pal palestinian legislative election of 2006 which was a significant event in the history of the palestinian israeli conflict because when the election took place the uh, it was hamas that won the election followed by fatah fatah which is a liberal organization and that believes in a two state solution whereas the hamas covenant clearly mentions the destruction of the israeli state hamas covenant hamas covenant is the hamas charter and that is further elaborated uh, in their char charter as to what they believe and what is their perspective with regards to israeli state the israeli society so for hamas for the palestinians hamas is a resistance group that is fighting for their cause for the palestinian cause but for from the israeli so, perspective uh, to put it very simple to put it very simple like sri lankan tamil start ltd the same for uh, hamas is for palestine with regards to ltt and hamas um that would be a completely uh, i think it would be a different very different situation with regards to how ltt was created how hamas was created so having that kind of a comparison would be difficult to analyze because for anyone who does not know ltt they wouldn't be able to link it with hamas until and unless they understand the ltt history the tamilian history in sri lanka and the sri lankan history the tamil diaspora in sri lanka so um i believe that when we try to analyze a particular organization the politics of a particular place rather than trying to have that for, for as, as a comparison with some other situation in some other part of the world it is better to just try and understand that situation because sometimes once there would be some or group some uh, academicians who believe that the comparison is not right some it's not accurate i won't say right wrong it won't be completely accurate it won't fit completely fit into that uh, analogy so hamas is somehow so for israeli organizations so for the israeli society for israel hamas is concert, the, the recent statements that is being made is hamas is worse than isis what they have done is nothing short of uh, any barbaric act but from a palestinian perspective if you see that there the hamas has had support because of which they were able to win that election without the palestinian support they wouldn't have won the uh, election at all and the palestinian authority that is now controlling the west bank that is running the uh, that that is palestinian authority that is run by the fatah party that that is currently led by mohammad abbas if you see in west bank as well palestinian authority does not have that much of a support so uh, when we say uh, when we look at hamas we have to see which perspective that is being seen Okay. So, but, okay. Yeah. So now coming to the war. Now coming to the war. Uh, the ultimate question is, what is the current situation? So we have seen all the videos where uh, these both the peoples are hitting each other. All these things can be seen. 
but uh, i have another question where what is the actual point with with the war stands now currently and uh, is there any way that they are trying try, trying to peace the war uh, and what are the other uh, uh, process that is getting affected due to this war for example international relationship what, what, is there any relationship we got affected, uh, affected or any trade is got affected so what are the other other perspectives okay so we'll start from the beginning which is october 7th around 6:30 am hamas launched a barrage of rockets towards israel this eventually i mean hamas has all pre- previously as well hamas israeli conflict has taken place hamas has launched rockets on israel previously as well but this time the number of rockets that were launched by hamas was so huge that it overwhelmed the iron dome which is a missile defense system that has become a cornerstone of israel's security apparatus that intercepts the uh, missiles and rockets that are launched towards israel and tries to and eventually stops it and has a huge that has a very significant accuracy rate but this time apart from launching rockets hamas fighters had infiltrated israel through multiple means and when i say multiple means there are various stages to it including dropping drones drone main first you had the drones dropping um explosives toward uh, uh, on israeli observation towers communication infrastructure towards the borders then you had the coordinated rocket fire and the manpower and with regards to because th- this is the first time when when hamas has attacked the rockets have also reached as far as various major cities including tel aviv and jerusalem and has also resulted in a lot of huge infrastructure damage to israel then then you have the explosives along the fence that have been when we say fence um the there is a smart fence that has separated israel and gaza which is equipped with various cutting edge technology that is efficient enough to design uh, design which is designed in such a manner that it could deduct any security breaches but despite that they had uh, the hamas uh, hamas uh, the hamas fighter the hamas militant group eventually blew up sections of those particular barrier the fences and then they finally attacked the uh, the rest of the fences and the uh, various security infrastructure were there using bulldozers so that a large number of vehicles can also get through now in the past as well we have israeli hamas war the gaza and israeli conflict that has taken place in the previous is not just like uh, to, it's 2023 2022 2021 there have been some of the other tensions take place has taken place in the past couple of years but there have been limited attacks the ha- attacks that have taken place on israel is completely limited but this time hamas has created uh, but hamas in the past couple of the months had created such an image that it, that it uh, portrayed that it is looking for a diplomatic solution rather than a military conflict on uh, attack on israel ra- uh, not ha- engaging in a military conflict with israel that created a image to the pers- that created a perception of hamas that it's financially struggling and does not have the military capabilities for a full fledged war, uh, war conflict with israel despite that this operation which is the al aqsa floods took 2 years to be 2 de- uh, years to be developed 2 years to be uh, formed by the hamas and eventually le- led to what we are having today this is one of the most unprecedented attack on israel since the 1973 yom kippur war and this is the first time since 1948 that palestinians that hamas has been able to take control of israeli territories that is also unprecedented and why i say unprecedented is because the israeli defense forces mossad the israel security forces intelligence forces are have that standard they have set the standard with regards to how military operations to uh, should take place 
they have set the standards for how an intelligence organization should operate despite that the question that now is being raised by the international community not just in terms of it policy makers but civilians are like why everyone is surprised is because the israel was caught unaware of this attack they were not aware of this attack at all that is the reason why everyone is looking up to hamas because they have exceeded all their expectations obviously th this conflict is taking place no i mean and it has led to a huge civilian casualties and uh, this is uh, this has led to a lot of uh, outcry among the international community as well because it has causing a lot of bloodshed but look what ha hamas has achieved because they have attained something that even regular armed forces are unable to do and this is the most lethal attack on israel on jews since holocaust that's the reason why this analogy is being this not analogy but the statements are pouring in from israel that israel's 711 is like the united states 911 israel's 7 uh, 7 <clears throat> uh, not 711 sorry uh, this uh, this attack that has taken place on 7th Octo october is like uh, the 911 because this event took place a day after the 50th anniversary of the yom kippur war so when you have the 50th anniversary of the yom kippur war a day before that it is expected for the israeli intelligence organizations for the israeli armed forces to be very alert to be very alert for any particular um, attacks on israel soil but that did not take place so uh, the reason why a lot of the is uh, the israel was not able to um foresee this kind of an attack from hamas there have been a list of reasons that have been given uh, that has been analyzed by various um, analysts across the world which is first the intelligence failure and when i say intelligence failure one needs to understand that information is not intelligence Informa in from the uh, from information to intelligence, it requires various steps on that process, which includes planning and direction, coll collection, processing, analysis and production of uh, the reports, and then dissemination of that information to such a standards that it is created into an intelligence that which can be used for very uh, for. action for uh, that intelligence can be converted into actionable and uh, uh, can assist in decision making so in when it comes to information to intelligence it is essential for joining the dots there are sometimes when they uh, when the intelligence organizations have the information but they are not able to join the dots because of which it has not been able to translate into intelligence and consequent con con uh, uh, consequently there uh, the there has not been uh, they are not able to take any particular action with regards to it now because of this intelligence failure it has resulted in the highest number of casualties that israel has seen since the um, since 1948 since uh, the holocaust time and other thing apart with regards to intelligence failure uh, the another conversation that is coming through is that there has been an egyptian tip off now the information is coming through that egyptians had informed the ID, israeli defense forces the idf that something big is going to take place now something big can mean two things there are two scenarios to it one that they gave information with regards to when where how whom how are they going to attack which place they are going to take attack what is the strength what can be expected amongst others in the, if that kind of a situation takes place that would be considered as a treachery for the palestinians uh from the egyptian because uh, they have treachery in terms of the palestinian brotherhood the treachery to the palestinian cause then the other perspective the other scenario with regards to it is that egyptians telling israel that there is normalization uh, abraham accords that take in place i'll come to it later i'll elaborate on it later there's the abraham accords but please do take into consider the palestinian cause because somewhere or the other 
you're not taking the palestinian cause while you're moving forward with the normalization of ties with the arab world so palestinians will not keep quiet and with regards to the palestinian cause taking a step back and arab countries that palestinians always looked up to for pushing their um, case in the international uh, political forum international uh, in, in international uh, politics if uh, palestinians will not keep quiet with regards to it so there are two different things with regards to the egyptian um, tip off now then we have the Isra uh, israelis who have denied that there have been no egyptian tip off that has taken place there has been no nothing information that has flown through from egypt but consider considering the history if this turns out true this will be the repeat of the Yom Kippur War with regards to the intelligence failure because even during the Yom Kippur War, there had been intelligence tip off from both Egypt and Jordan to the then Prime Minister Golda Meira. You had the Egyptian uh, Ash Ashraf Marwa, who was, um, uh, who was the son in law of uh, Nasser, who had informed the Israeli intelligence groups with regards to uh, this kind of an attack taking place, a conflict that is going to take place, which eventually turned into an Israeli Arab conflict. So that is also there. Then there are new informations that are coming through that the night before the Hamas attack, Israeli intelligence had picked up signs of irregular activity among the Hamas operatives in Gaza, but they did not forward it to the top IDF or the Shin Bet leaders and they did not inform the Israeli forces on the borders to be on high alert. Then prior to that as well, they had... Uh, Apart from these intelligence information, then you had prior to that as well, they had the Israeli, uh, sorry, Hezbollah chief uh, Hassan Nasrallah and secretary general of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement, Nakhala in Beirut in March. Another meeting took place in August. So all of these dots were not connected. So I think it would take time with regards to uh, what kind of an intelligence failure was there? What went amiss because of which Mossad could not intercept this kind of an operation which is taking place like for two years now? Then the other reason which has been on the, uh, the that must be taken into consideration is why Israel is in the news for the past couple of months is because of the political situation in the country. Now, the political situation in the country, why I state that the second point is there have been a political crisis in Israel because Israel has undergone about five general elections in, in the past uh, four, three, uh, four, four years, let's say three to four years, uh, maybe uh, more, but it was uh, five general elections in less than four years. And finally, in November 2022, we had Benjamin Netanyahu was elected as the prime minister. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu as well was elected uh, as the prime minister at a time when he, there were allegations of bribery, forgery, uh, fraud, amongst other allegations uh, on him. At that uh, after his election, then you had the judicial reforms that had been proposed by the liquid um, uh, for by the uh, current uh, prime minister with other conservative and right-wing parties that are in coalition with him in the government. So the, in uh, judicial, when I say judicial reforms, it refers to the uh, legislation that was passed by the Knesset that abolished, abolished the reasonableness doctrine under which the Supreme Court of Israel or the lower courts had the power to cancel government decisions that they deemed extremely unreasonable. Now, when that kind of a legislation is passed, it raises questions with regards to the government curbing the judicial, uh, the power of the judiciary. You have, uh, since Israel is a democracy, there is a separation of power. It it was felt like the uh, legislation legislature it is curbing the judic uh, judicial rights, the judiciary's uh, powers in the uh, Israeli <clears throat> society. 
this judicial process overall led to a split in the israeli society itself on one hand there were protesters that stated that such decisions would undermine the judicial system in israel that was essential to maintain the checks and balances with the government and was also supported by the political rivals then apart from that you had hundreds of israeli military reservists who had signed a pet petition that they stated that they would have a announcing that they were voluntarily resi resigning from their armed services they uh, with regards to their uh, uh, reservist duties this further put israeli armed forces in such a situation that declined the israel uh, th that declined the overall uh, ability for the israeli forces to be prepared for any kind of a situation with regards to in case of an attack that takes place on israel apart from that this legislation also led to a nationwide uh, protest drew international media's attention there was an outcry amongst the international community because they were looking at it and they were seeing that judiciary uh, judicial rights have been curbed by the government whereas the government is arguing that the um, retired judges the retired um, people uh, retired judges had too much rights with regards to the decisions that has been made by the israeli government so that also can be considered as one of the factors with regards to the lack of israeli forces being unprepared okay so is there any anything that will can st stop this war for example few says that modi should intervene and should talk with both the countries and ask to stop the war or what is going to happen next to understand what will happen next we need to understand why this conflict is suddenly taking place right now that is extremely essential to understand to understand what's going to go ahead we need to understand the present the past now the reason why israel hamas is attacking israel right now there are a couple of reasons associated to it the first is the israeli settlers issue now israeli set settlers refers to the israeli community just particularly primarily jews that have settled in territories that were captured by israel during the 1967 israeli arab war and these territories are located in various uh, primarily located in west bank east jerusalem golan heights now there has been an increase in the settlers issue is because there have been an increased violence by the israel uh, settlers against the palestinian residents in the west bank and that is blamed on the policies of the current israeli government because the current israeli government is formed by a lot of right wing uh, groups they have a lot of um, right wing groups that support this kind of violence by the israeli settlers on the palestinian community uh, Pal palestinian residents in these uh, uh, territories so the israeli settler issue eventually uh, in order to try to uh, stabilize the uh, situation with regards to the violence the israeli defense forces were eventually diverted uh, towards west bank to contain those violence that further weakened the country's defense forces the other second re reason is somehow this second reason is the storming of the al aqsa mosque now al aqsa mosque is the third al, -Al, -Al aqsa is the third uh, mo holiest uh, mosque in the islamic world after the uh, the mecca and medina which is in saudi arabia in the uh, past couple of months let's say for the past couple of months there have been israeli forces that have attacked the al aqsa compound there have been increased number of incidents where jews have entered the al aqsa compound and and the most recent case was when dozens of israeli um, uh, settled uh, the most recent case was when the jews had and uh, forced their way into the al aqsa complex and that according to the laws entering any part of the al aqsa compound for uh, is forbidden for the jews due to the sacred nature of the site which the al aqsa compound also known as the temple mount is forbidden for the jews and despite that this 
uh, at uh, this kind of um, desecration of the Alaksa compound mosque is taking place and the most recent was uh, the uh, on the fifth day of Sukkot when a lot of Jews had entered the um, holy site. The third and the most important reason that has been uh, that must be taken into account when understanding why this attack now is the Abraham Accords. Now, Abraham Accords refers to a bilateral uh, agreement between Israel and the Arab countries for the normalization of ties. These, this was brokered under the Trump administration back in uh, 2020. And uh, United Arab Emirates, you have Morocco, Bahrain, other countries, including Sudan, are in conversation with regards to normalizing of ties. The most recent conversation that have come uh, in uh, in limelight is with regards to the normalization of ties between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia and Israel normalizing their ties is a huge change in the Middle East geopolitics. Because from a position where the Arab countries denied the existence of Israel to the point that Saudi Arabia, even Saudi Arabia, normalizing their ties with Israel, moving forward with regards to having economic ties, security ties, diplomatic relations, as a huge development in the geopolitics of the Middle East. And a, this kind of a development is also another way of stating that they... Middle East, the Arab countries have moved on and the Palestinian cause is not at the forefront. The Abraham Accords led to a situation where, because of which Israel has been in the best geopolitical situation in the region than it has been anywhere before two or three decades ago. The collective interest on the Palestinian cause, which is a two-state solution, took a backseat. Now, when we say two-state solution, that has that is a conversation that has been taking place for decades. But no so negotiations. I just have a have question here. Made. I just have a question here. So you said Saudi Arabia and Israel have, have started a good relationship now. So that was a shocker to uh, Palestinian people. When I say uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia relations, they are in a conversation with regards to normalization of ties. So this was a huge shocker because Arab norm, uh, Arab no, uh, Israeli normalization of ties have accelerated since the Arab uh, Abraham Accords, and now for months Saudi Arabia and Israel were in a conversation. Now this is coming as a shocker because even though there has been a gradual shift amongst the leadership of Arab countries with regards to normalization of ties with Israel. One needs to understand that the Arab uh, Middle East, uh, the Islamic world, the general population is still very sympathetic to the Palestinian cause. They're, they are still sympathetic with regards to the plight and they have their sympathies and support to their Palestinian brothers and sisters. When this kind of a situation, the Israel, even though the attack has taken place, that coincides with Israeli uh, uh, the conversation. But the con uh, the attack the attack has been planned for the past two years. But it took place just at the time when you have Saudi Arabia leaders that have been coming through and saying that they are almost in um, going on the verge of normalizing ties with Israel. Israeli uh, lawmakers staying to the world that they are almost uh, on the verge of normalizing their ties with Saudi Arabia. Now, even in the recent United Nations summit, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, while speaking in the United Nations, was holding a map where he spoke extensively about the Saudi Arabia and Israeli relations, the new Middle East with regards to growth, the geopolitics, stating how Middle East politics has changed from since the creation in 1948 to uh, 2023. Because that was that speech spoke volumes of change in the new uh, change in the middle east the new middle east the new middle east geopolitics but from 
from a palestinian perspective now people uh, now the general question that is being raised is why palestinians are attacking now is it because of the is uh, uh, normalization of ties etc but from a palestinian perspective they do not require they for them the, the argument is that they they do not require a reason to attack israel because considering the history they they have been asking for a two state solution you have the current existing palestinian palestinian territories are uh, west bank and gaza west bank that has been uh, led by the palestinian authority dominated by the fatah party led which is fatah party that is being currently led by um, mohammad abbas the palestinians in west bank are not happy with uh, the uh, palestinian authority the palestinians uh, in general do not support uh, do not have much support for the palestinian authority because for them the west uh, the palestinian authority the fat uh, fatah party the mohammad abbas has led them down with regards to their rights with regards to negotiating with israel for a state two state solution for them and this is west bank then we have gaza gaza that is being currently uh, uh, currently in the control of hamas gaza is also is a, a place which has a two about 2 million population you have mediterranean sea on one side two sides that has been covered by completely fences by israel then uh, it's it, it is there there's a reason why it is uh, stated that uh, gaza is the world's largest open air prison now some people would argue that it is very politically um pol politically motivated that that statement that entire statement but from a palestinian perspective they, they are they, uh, they do not have control over their own air spaces with regards to how to come in and move out with regards to job perspectives they are economically really poor so these kind of situations and with regards to the uh, israel Abra uh, israeli uh, arab normalizations the abraham accords the palestinians have not been in the news at all the palestinian cause the two state solution is not in the news israel is in the news because of uh, its own internal uh, political situation it is in the news with regards to normalization of ties with arab states so for them the palestinian felt a betrayed that the arab countries are also moving ahead with israel to the, to them palestinians israel are their occupiers now from israel there would be a different argument to, to this uh, uh, to this statement but i am making this uh, from a palestinian perspective i'm talking from a palestinian perspective so uh, for them the, uh, israel is moving forward G middle east is moving forward the arab state leaders are moving forward that is Th this has led to a situation where they, there has been an increased frustration for decades they have been uh, have asking for negotiations the negotiations are stalled so despite i mean uh, so palestinian palestinian violence, feels that all the arab countries have betrayed betrayed they have moved forward they have moved forward with regards to uh, normalizing ties with israel the palestinian cause is not at the forefront when normalizing of ties is also taking place now we have arab united arab emirates you have uae you have morocco you have bahrain the palestinian cause there was no argument or ne no negotiations with regards to uh, the palestinian aspect to it they normalized ties they have been there have been an increase in economic and security um, agreements between them they have moved forward now saudi arabia also doing that is a huge blow so these situations it, these situations situations have eventually led to what we have today right now with regards to hamas um, hamas and israel war of 2023 so one thing which is very clear apurva here is uh, even the the countries which are trying to piece this out uh, are are standing inside of israel not inside of palestine right 
well uh, with regards to the situation right now there is first the regional uh, reaction to it then you have the international reaction to it first you had uh, with let's talk about the regional response to the hamas at uh, hamas and israeli war of 2023 so first we'll talk about saudi arabia there have been a mixed reaction from saudi arabia because saudi arabia foreign minister calls for a palestinian state in the united nations general assembly that was a meeting in held in new york in september then you have the saudi arabia ambassador of palestinian that who reaffirmed that saudi arabia stands uh, stand saudi arabia stand on the uh, arab peace initiative with regards to for the full normalization of ties of israel in return for its uh, withdrawal from all occupied territories and the establishment of an independent palestinian state and the return of the refugees then you had the prime minister uh, not the prime minister saudi arabia crown prince mohammed bin salman calling on restraint between israel and hamas but there have also been in uh, uh, saudi arabia uh, policy makers have also been in the news with regards to normalization of ties so a mixed reaction from saudi arabia then th there is the united arab emirates the uh, the uae calls for exercise of maximum restraint and an immediate ceasefire to avoid serious repercussions that was a statement made by the foreign ministry then uh, U uh, uae president sheikh mohammed bin zayed al nayan condemned the uh, saudi arabia uh, so uh, condemned the hamas attack then uh, the u uh, the, there was a tweet that was made uh, by him with regards to the attack by hamas on uh, uh, israel then then apart from that you had uae uh, allocating 20 million dollars uh, to uh, humanitarian aid to palestinian that would be dispersed from various un organizations then you have the bahrain that is expressing a uh, condemnation and strong uh, uh, reaction against the israeli bombing then on then there is uh, turkey now turkey has also uh, had some of a mixed reaction first you had uh, Er, er, president erdogan who was sympathetic uh, to per, per, uh, generally the erdogan uh, erdogan is very sympathetic to the palestinians more than israel but when this conflict started he called on israelis and the palestinian to act with restraints and refrain from hostile act that could escalate the situation after that there was statements where erdogan condemned israel's blockade and bombing of the besieged gaza strip then you have again calling erdogan calling on israel to stop its attacks on gaza amounting to genocide but pre uh, from the past to what uh, to the present uh there has been a restraint with regards to the rhetorics that have been stated by erdogan unlike in the past when uh, erdogan uh, Pr president erdogan used to lash out at israel this time there has comparatively been a restraint in terms of his language and the timings so as to not jeopardize the new chapter that has just opened with israel because israel and turkey also uh, recently normalized their diplomatic relations and exchanged ambassador only back in 2022 so even though despite his statements being a little uh, from, they have been two different statements first from restraint to call amounting to genocide despite that um, there have been uh, it, even though he has toughened his tone against israel over the time since the conflict began and due to the mounting casualties in gaza he has also with somehow withheld the support that would please hamas and this is also a critical factor that needs to be taken into consideration because uh there are a lot of hamas officers in turkey and turkey supports hamas with regards to fundings through various organizations 
and the reason why this kind of a restraint is taking place is also because of the in uh, india middle east and european corridor that was recently signed in the geo g20 summit in new delhi where the imac is a uh, co completely by bypass turkey and it is ending in greece that has a huge economic uh, repercussion for turkey because it directly impacts the maritime industry and already in the re past couple of months uh, in the past few years turkey has had a huge economic crisis and there have been reduction in terms of uh, the currency value amongst others so they can uh, erdogan can't completely go against uh, Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as well, because the, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is the one he has to be negotiating with with regards to IMF. Ra that rather than going via other countries, try to include Turkey as well, because geographically it would be much more better. So that would be the negotiating pitch with uh, what Erdogan would be having with Israel, because if once that IMF uh, takes place. it would have a huge repercussion in general if we look at the overall regional reaction to it there there is one can analyze that uh, there have been some support for israel that would not cannot be expected if it was a decade ago or two decades ago that itself is a huge development in the middle east politics but at the same time the uh, gulf the arab countries the uh, countries in the middle east have to also take into consideration their general public even though the middle east uh, countries leaders are moving ahead for normalization of ties the population is still very sympathetic to the palestinian cause still against israel still believes that the uh, israeli or uh, arab normalization of ties should not take place and still believe that their leaders the population believes that their leaders should support the palestinian cause and that is that is evident with the number of protests that are taking place pro palestinian uh, protests that are taking place across the region you have Tunisia, you have Morocco, you have uh, in Bahrain, you have uh, in uh, Kuwait, Lebanon. I mean, even though there are hundreds and thousands of protesters that have come in support of Palestine, so this is the regional response. With regards to international response, we have uh, the United States of America that has always stood behind Israel uh, and has always supported uh, the, the uh, it, it create since United States was one of the uh, first countries to recognize the uh, creation of Israel under President Truman, and right now under President Biden. The, United States have strong support for uh, Israel. They have increased the fundings for Israel. Then uh, there is the deployment of two aircraft carriers in the Medi Mediterranean. Uh, apart from that, uh, you have uh, presidents, uh, president coming to Israel and having a conversation. You have Anthony Blinken, who is also coming and having a conversation. So United States of America has shown. huge support for israel and had been consistent with regards to the support with regards to the european union you have a divided block because you do, uh, european union does not this time did not have a unanimous voice with regards to uh, uh, the suspension of let's start from the suspension of funds so about 728 million dollars of um, funds development aid funds was sent to uh, was expected to be sent to palestine and european commissioner uh, oliver verheli i may be wrong with the pronunciation stated that uh, they, they are suspending the uh, development aid to palestinians it is under review later the decision was reversed and the eu stated that it would review its payment to ensure that the funds are not being misused and then spain ireland and luxembourg 
country some of the countries that had expressed their criticism and accused the european union of palest uh, for punishing all the palestinians for an attack by the hamas which has eventually led to the largest israeli casualty since 1948 and condemn uh, condemned this kind of a uh, decision that was somehow unilaterally made then you had the uh, european commission european parliament and other major buildings hosting the israeli flag uh, but at the same time there is spanish foreign minister who says we can't confuse hamas with the palestinian people and then <clears throat> there have been statements made that uh made by the uh, made by another spanish minister that has accused israel of carrying out a planned genocide then you have um israel a uh, italian prime minister uh, meeting prime minister benjamin netanyahu so that is also even though uh, they have uh, so this is the kind of a reaction that has come from the european union the only country that has so far not condemned hamas the attack is russia but other than that the entire world has stood by um, israel with the recent attacks and there have been some mixed reaction but they have had that entire statement that yes uh, these attacks uh, there needs to be a strong the conflict needs to stop because of the increasing civilian casualty amongst others yeah i think i th i can take this as a message for the today um like today the world is world is actually supporting uh, uh, israel and uh, russia is pretty silent on that part uh, so we have to look and see how things move forward uh, but i have to thank uh, apurva today for taking her time and joining in today's meeting thank you apurva namaste